Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Attorney General Barr, has the President or anyone at the White House ever asked or suggested that you open an investigation of anyone? Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Uh, yes or no? Could you, could you repeat that question? I will repeat it. Yeah. Has the President or anyone at the White House ever asked or suggested that you open an investigation of anyone? Yes or no, please, sir. Um, the President or anybody else? Seems you'd remember something like that and be able to tell us. Yeah, but I'm, I'm trying to grapple with the word suggest. I mean, there have been discussions of, of matters out there that uh, they have not asked me to open an investigation, but... Perhaps they've suggested? I don't know. I wouldn't say suggest. Hinted? I, I don't know. Inferred? You don't know. Okay. Um, in your March 24th summary, you wrote that, quote, after reviewing the special counsel's final report. But I will say that no one. Sir, I'm, not, I'm asking a question. Yeah. Have you ever discussed special counsel Mueller or his investigation with anyone? Well, it's uh, in the news every day. I... Have you discussed it with anyone? Uh, with other judges, I know. Uh... Have you discussed Mueller or his investigation with anyone at Kasowitz, Benson, and Torres, the law firm founded by Mark Kasowitz, President Trump's personal lawyer? Uh, Be sure about your answer, sir. Um, well, I'm not remembering, but if you have something you want to... Are you certain you've not had a conversation with I, anyone at that law firm? Kasowitz, Benson... Kasowitz, Benson, and yeah. Torres, which is the law firm founded by Mark Kasowitz, yeah. who is President Trump's personal lawyer. Are you, have you had any conversation about Robert Mueller or his investigation with anyone at that firm? Yes or no? Well, is there a person you're talking about? I'm asking you a very direct question, yes or no. I, I need to know the... Uh, I'm not sure I know everyone who works at that law firm. I don't think you need to. I think you need to know who you talked with. Who'd you talk to? I don't think I, I I'm not remembering, but I'm, I'm happy to be refreshed or if you want to tell me who you're thinking so are who you, works. I, are you saying that with all that you remember, you have an impeccable memory. You've been speaking for almost eight hours, I think more, with this committee about all sorts of things you remember. Yeah. How can you not remember whether or not you had a conversation about Robert Mueller or his investigation with anyone at that law firm. This I investigation has only been going on for so long, sir. So right, I'm not sure I, do I, I, I'm just trying to think, do I know anyone who works at that firm? I might know. Have you had, that's not my question. My question is, have you had a conversation with anyone at that firm about that investigation? It's a really specific question. I would like to know the person you're thinking of, because what if there's I think you're thinking of someone you don't want to tell us. <laughs> Did you have any communications with Russian officials uh, for any reason during the campaign that have not been disclosed uh, in public or to this committee? Uh, I don't recall it, uh, but I have to tell you, uh, I cannot testify to what was uh, said as we were standing at the Republican convention before the podium where I spoke. My, my just, question uh, is only as I don't have the detailed memory of that. Okay, as it I'm relates to your knowledge. You. Did you have any communication with any Russian businessmen or any Russian nationals? I don't believe I had any conversation with Russian businessmen or Russian nationals. Are you aware of Although any communication? A lot of people were at the convention. It's conceivable that somebody sir, sir, came I up have to me. Just a few. Well, you let me qualify it. If, okay. if I don't qualify it, you'll accuse me of lying. So I need to be correct as best I can. I do want you to be honest. And I'm not able to uh, be rushed this fast. It makes me nervous. One question I've not heard you answer is, do you believe that the previous interrogation techniques were immoral? Senator, I believe that CIA officers to whom you referred... It's a yes or no answer. Do you believe the previous interrogation techniques were immoral. I'm not asking, do you believe they were legal? I'm asking, do you believe they were immoral? Senator, I believe that CIA... 
did the extraordinary SBO, work to prevent another attack on this country given the legal tools that we were authorized Please to use. Please answer yes or no. Do you believe in hindsight that those techniques were immoral? Senator, what I believe sitting here today is that I support the higher moral standard we have decided to hold ourselves to. Can you please to. answer the question? Senator, I, I think I've answered the question. No, you've not. Do you believe the previous techniques, now armed with hindsight, do you believe they were immoral? Yes or no? Senator, I believe that we should hold ourselves to the moral standard outlined in the Army Field Manual. Okay, so I understand that you're, you've not answered the question, but I'm going to move on. In your March 24th summary, you wrote that, quote, after reviewing the special counsel's final report, Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein and I have concluded that the evidence is not sufficient to establish that the president committed an obstruction of justice offense. Now, the special counsel's investigation produced a great deal of evidence. Um, I'm led to believe it included witnesses' notes and emails, witnesses' congressional testimony, witnesses' interviews, um, which were summarized in the FBI 302 forms, former FBI Director Comey's memos, and the president's public statements. My question is, in reaching your conclusion, did you personally review all of the underlying evidence? Uh, no, we took... And accept, did, did, did we accepted did Mr. Rosenstein? No, we accepted the statements in the report as the factual record. We did not go underneath it to see whether or not they were accurate. We accepted it as accurate and made our. So you our, accepted it, the report as the evidence? Yes. You did not question or look at the underlying evidence that supports the conclusions in the report. No. Did uh, Mr. Rosenstein review the evidence? that underlines and supports the conclusions in the report, to your knowledge? Not to my knowledge. We accepted the statements in the report did and anyone the characterization in your, of the evidence is true. Did anyone in your executive office review the evidence supporting the report? No. No. Yet you represented to the American public that the evidence was not, quote, sufficient to support an obstruction of justice the evidence offense. Present, the evidence presented in the report. This is, not a, this is not a mysterious process. In the Department of Justice, we have pros memos and declination memos every day coming up. And we don't go and look at the underlying evidence. We, Sir, would you support... We take the characterization of the evidence as true. As the Attorney General of the United States, you run the United States Department of Justice. If in any U.S. Attorney's office around the country, the head of that office, when being asked to make a critical decision about, in this case, the person who holds the highest office in the land, mm -hmm. and whether or not that person committed a crime, would you accept them recommending a charging decision to you if they had not reviewed the evidence? Well, that's a question for Bob Mueller. He's the U.S. attorney. He's the one who presents the report. But it was you who made the charging decision, sir. What, what, what? You made the decision not to charge the president. No, in a pros memo and in a declination memo. You said it was your baby. What did you mean by that? It was my, it was my baby to, to, let, to decide whether or not to disclose it to the public. And whose decision and we, was and, it? Who's, who had the power to make the decision about whether or not the evidence was sufficient to make a determination of whether there had been an obstruction of justice? Prosecution memos go up to the supervisor. In this case, it was the, you know, the attorney general and the deputy attorney general who, who decide on the final decision. And that is based on the memo as presented by the U.S. Attorney's Office. I think you've I've made seen, it clear that of, you've not looked I've at the evidence. We can move on. I I've think it, you've made it clear, sir, that you've not looked at the evidence, and we can day. move on. Will you agree to consult career DOJ ethics officials about whether your recusal from the 14 investigations that have been discussed by my colleagues is necessary? Uh, I, I don't see any basis for it. I already consulted with them. and, and You have was, consulted with them about the 14 other investigations? About the, uh, about the uh, Mueller case. Have you consulted with the career DOJ ethics officials about the appropriateness 
of you being involved or recusing yourself well, what, from the 14 other investigations that have been referred basis? out. On what basis? Conflict of interest, clear conflict of interest. Conflict? What's my conflict of interest? I think the American public has seen quite well that you are biased in this situation and you've not been objective, and that would arguably be the conflict of interest. Well, you know, interest. I haven't been the only decision maker here. Now, let's take the Deputy Attorney General, Rod Rosenstein, who was approved by this Senate, 94 to 6, with specific discussion on the floor that he would be responsible for supervising the Russian investigation. I'm glad you brought up that. Okay. That's and a great topic. He has 30 topic. years' experience, and we had a number of senior prosecutors in the department involved in this process, both career and non-career. Yes, I've, 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 we're, I've we're read all the agreed process, on the sir. I have another question. And I'm glad you brought that subject up because I have a question about that. Earlier today, in response to Senator Graham, you said, quote, that you consulted with Rosenstein constantly, unquote, with respect to the special counsel's investigation and report. But Deputy Attorney General Rosenstein is also a key witness in the firing of FBI Director Comey. Did you consult well, that's with, I'm not finished. Yeah. Did you consult with DOJ ethics officials before you enlisted Rod Rosenstein to participate in a charging decision for an investigation, the subject of which he is also a witness? My understanding was that he had been cleared already to participate in it by the. So you had Spirit. consulted with them and they cleared it. No, I think they cleared it when he when he took over the investigation. Did That's you consult? That's my understanding. I, 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 I you don't, don't know whether he's been cleared of no, a he, conflict he, of interest. He would be participating if there was a conflict of interest. So you're saying that it did not need to be reviewed by the career ethics officials in your office. I believe. To I believe it was. It was appropriate? Well, I believe it was reviewed, and I and what would also finding? point out this seems to be a bit of a flip-flop because when the president's supporters Sir, the were challenging Rosenstein... flip-flop, I Rosenstein, think, in this case is that you're not answering the question directly. What? Did the ethics officials in your office, in the Department of Justice, review the appropriateness of Rod Rosenstein being a part of making a charging decision on an investigation which he is also a witness in? Yeah, my, so as I said, my understanding was he had been cleared and he had been cleared before I arrived. By in making a decision on the Mueller report? Yes. And, and the findings of whether or not the case would be charged on obstruction of justice? He had you, been cleared he on that? A, he, was, he was the acting attorney general on the Mueller investigation. Had he been cleared he had been, to make, I, I am, uh, by your side, a I am decision? Informed, I am informed that before I arrived, he had been cleared by the ethics officials. Of what? Of serving as acting attorney general on the Mueller case. How about making a charging decision on obstruction of justice? That is the what the acting underlying offenses, which include him as a witness. You know, he, he, that's what the acting attorney general's job is. To be a witness and to make the decision about being a prosecutor? Well, no, but to make charging decisions. I have nothing else. My time is right out. Thank you. Sir, please answer the question. I don't know everyone who works at that law firm, Senator. And have you had any discussion with anyone ever about Bob Mueller and or his investigation? So you said Bob Mueller or... So have or I ever had a discussion about Bob Mueller? I used to work in the administration with Bob Mueller. What about his investigation? Have you had a conversation with anyone about his investigation? I'm sure I've talked to fellow judges. Anyone uh, aside from fellow judges? About Bob Mueller? About his investigation, sir. I'll ask again. But, only, I asked the question just a minute ago. I'm surprised you forgot. Have you had this conversation with anyone about the investigation that Bob Mueller is conducting regarding Russia interference right. with our election or any other matter? The fact that it's ongoing, it's a topic in the news every day. I'm, I talk to, it's, uh, talk to fellow judges about it. It's in, our, you know, it's in the courthouse in uh, the District of Columbia. So I guess... Uh, and I'll ask the answer to that is time. yes. So the answer is yes. Okay. And did you talk with anyone at Kasowitz, Benson, and Torres? You, you asked me that. I need to know who works there. I think you can answer the question without me giving you a list of all employees of that law firm. Well, actually, I can't. I, Why not? Because I don't know who works there. So that's the only way you would know who you spoke with? I, I want to understand your, your, your response to my question, because it's a very direct one. Did you speak with anyone at that law firm 
about the Mueller investigation? It's a very direct question. Right. I'd be I'd be surprised, but I don't know anyone. I don't know if the uh, I don't know everyone who works at that law firm. So I just want to be careful because your question was and or. So I want to be very literal. That's that's fine. I'll ask a more direct question if that's helpful to you. Did you speak with anyone at that law firm about Bob, Bob Mueller's investigation? I, I'm not remembering anything like that, but I want to know a roster of people, and I want to know more. So you're not denying that you spoke with well, anyone? Well, I, I said I don't remember anything like that. Okay. I'll move on. Okay. Clearly, you're not going to answer the question. <clears throat> uh, Attorney General Sessions, you have um, several times this afternoon uh, prefaced your a responses by saying, um, to the best of your recollection, uh, just on the first page of your three pages of written testimony, you wrote, nor do I recall, do not have recollection, do not remember it. So my question is, for any of your testimony today, did you refresh your memory with any written documents, be they your calendar, written correspondence, emails, notes of any sort? I, I attempted to refresh my recollection, but so much of this is um, in, a, in a wholesale campaign of extraordinary nature uh, uh, that you're moving so fast that you don't keep notes. You meet people. I didn't keep notes of uh, my conversation with the Russian ambassador at the Sir, Republican I'd like convention. I'd just talk about well, you, what you did. You know, I'm notes. just saying I didn't keep notes on most of these things, and there's Will nothing for me. Will you provide this committee with the notes that you did maintain? As appropriate, I will supply the committee with documents. Can you please tell me what you mean when you say appropriate? I would have to consult with uh, um, lawyers in the department who um, know the proper procedure uh, to before disclosing documents that are held within the Department of Justice. Attorney and General I'm not Sessions. able to make that opinion today. Sir, I'm sure you prepared for this hearing today, and most of the questions that have been presented to you were uh, predictable. So my question to you is, did you then review with the lawyers of your department, if you as the top lawyer are unaware, what the law is regarding what you can share with us and what you cannot share with us, what is privileged and what is not privileged? We discussed the uh, basic uh, parameters of testimony. I frankly have not discussed documentary uh, disclosure rules. Will you make a commitment to this committee that you will share any written correspondence, be they your calendars, records, notes, emails, or anything that has been reduced at any point in time in writing I will, uh, to this committee where legally um, you actually have an obligation to do so? I'll commit to reviewing the uh, rules of the department and as uh, and when uh, that issue is raised to respond appropriately. Are you aware of any communications with other Trump campaign officials and associates uh, that they had with Russian officials or any uh, Russian nationals? I don't recall that. And uh, are you aware of At any, this moment. Are you aware of any communications uh, with any Trump officials, or did you have any communications with any officials about uh, Russia or Russian interests in the United States before January 20th? No. I may have had some conversations, uh, and I think I did, uh, with the general strategic concept of the possibility of whether or not Russia and the United States could get on a more harmonious relationship and move off the hostility. Uh, the Soviet Union did, in fact, collapse. Uh, it's really a, a tragic you, strategic Thank event you. that we're not able to get along before, better than Before we are being today. sworn in as Attorney General, how did you typically communicate with then-candidate or President-elect Trump? Would you repeat that? Before you were sworn in as Attorney General, how did you typically communicate with then-candidate or President-elect Trump? Um, I did, did not submit memoranda. Uh, I did not uh, make formal presentations. Did you ever communicate with him in writing? I don't believe so. And um, you referred to a long-standing DOJ policy. Um, can you tell us what policy it is you're talking about? Well, I think most cabinet people, as the witnesses uh, you had before you earlier, those individuals uh, declined to comment because we're all about conversations with the president. Sir, I'm just asking you about the DOJ policy you referred to. policy that goes beyond just the attorney general. Is that policy in writing somewhere? Uh, I, I think so. So did you not consult it before you came before this committee, knowing we would ask you questions about it? Well, we 
we talked about it. The, the policy is Did based. Did you ask that it would be shown to you? The policy is based on the principle that the president. Sir, uh, I'm not asking about the principle. I'm well, asking when well, you, you would be asked the these question. questions and you would rely on that policy. Chairman, Did you not ask your staff to show you the policy that would be the basis for you refusing to answer the Chairman, majority of questions that have been be asked? Should be allowed to answer the question. Senators will allow the chair <laughs> to control the hearing. Senator Harris, let him answer. Please do. Uh, Thank you. We talked about it, uh, and we talked about the real principle that's at stake. It's one that I have some appreciation for as having spent 15 years in the Department of Justice, 12 as United States <coughs> Attorney, and that principle is that the Constitution provides the head of the executive branch certain privileges and that uh, members, one of them is confidentiality of communications. And it is improper for agents of any of the department of, of uh, any departments in the executive branch to waive that privilege without a clear approval Chairman, of the president. I have asked and that's the uh, situation this we're in. For a yes or no, did you ask? Well, your so the staff answer is yes. I policy. consulted. So did you ask your uh, staff to see the policy? Expired. <laughs> Apparently Senator not. Cornyn. So I understand that you, from previous answers, are serving as the authority over whether or not CIA information concerning you will be classified or not. Given an obvious appearance of conflict, will you agree to recuse yourself from the responsibility and the authority to make decisions about whether or not that information will be classified or, or not. Will you agree to recuse yourself of that responsibility and authority? Yes or no? Senator, I am following the guidelines that exist at CIA, and there is another cl declassification authority. It's called the IRO. I have not yes, interfered with well, Do you with believe that you have the authority to recuse yourself? I'll take that for the record. I, it, I, I may have the authority to recuse myself. Assuming I'm not a lawyer. Do. I don't, I'm not sure about that. Assuming you do, and I believe you do, will you agree to recuse yourself from the responsibility and the authority of making decisions about what CIA information about you and your record will be classified or declassified? Senator, if I had agreed with the proposals that have come up to, because people thought it would be advantageous to me, I think I would have been um, abdicating my responsibility to follow the rules that everyone at CIA follows. Okay, and you also in this hearing have a responsibility to ask, answer the questions that are being asked of you. I'm gonna ask you a different question. Do you, would you agree that given this appearance of conflict or potential conflict around the classification or declassification of these documents, that would you agree that Director Coates instead should have the responsibility for declassification decisions regarding your background? Senator, I think one important thing is that this committee plays a unique role to review the classified record, and we have sent over every piece of paper we can lay our hands on about my classified record all of my evaluations over a 33-year career. And I hope every senator has had the opportunity to look at that classified indeed, material. Indeed, I have. But and there I are... Have another question for you then, because it, I only have a few minutes left. I only have a few seconds left. Uh, the president has asserted that torture works. Do you agree with that statement? Senator, I... I I don't believe that torture works. I believe uh, that in the CIA's program, and, and I'm not attributing this to enhanced interrogation techniques, I believe, as many people, directors who have sat in this chair before me, that valuable information was obtained from senior al-Qaeda operatives that allowed us to defend this country and prevent another attack. Is that a yes? No, it's not a yes. We got valuable information from debriefing of al-Qaeda detainees. And I don't, I don't think it's knowable whether uh, interrogation techniques played a role in that. Thank you. My time is up.